Uh, this uh, this video uh, that we're about to show for you is a video on what to expect when you receive your new Easy Smoke Cloak uh, standalone system and uh, what to expect uh, when you open it up and unpack it, how to install it uh, and uh, integrate it together as an operational unit and, uh, and then a second video will, uh, will follow on how to integrate the application to your smartphone. So when you receive your standalone, uh, uh, the one of three sizes, the one we're using for this is the uh, EZ1100. Uh, it will come in by, via FedEx in a, in a box while wrapped with Fragile. So we're going to unpack this box and uh, go through and show you uh, uh, what is in it uh, when you uh, unpack it and how, uh, how it all works. So as you unpack it, you'll have the uh, keypad package uh, with all of the electronics. You'll have the devices that are going to attach to the system that you've ordered and are pre-programmed. This system is fully pre-programmed uh, when you receive it and ready to go out of the box. If you've opened it on the right side, uh, you will find that the machine is fairly easy to get out. You just grab a hold of it and the popcorn goes everywhere. That's what popcorn does. Then it will be wrapped in plastic to protect. Generally, uh, when you receive your uh, smoke cloak and you've unpacked it all, this is uh, what you're going to find in the box. Uh, going from left to right, you're going to have the keypad and the accessories required for the keypad, the control or the ultrasync hub for the system. It has the battery for the battery backup, which is installed in the back. We'll get to that later. You have the power uh, power cable, um, which uh, connects the power, and uh, you have a locking uh, a locking device so you can lock it to your uh, to your power on your wall. You have the bracket to hold the keypad and the associated hardware for mounting it to a wall. The keypad harness is only long enough to mount the keypad right beside the machine. We've designed it that way specifically. Uh, alter the UltraSync hub. Uh, is designed so that no user input is really required with the keypad. It's all done on your remote app or with your uh, key fob which is included. Um, so that brings me to the segue of the key fob which is uh, already programmed, the door contact and the motion detector. This is the standard offering that comes in your kit and like I said it's already learned to the system and already progr programmed in to work uh, as a functioning alarm system to operate or a hub to operate the system right out of the box. If you want to order extra parts at the time they will already be married into the system as well and, and included in the box or the kit. Also you have the smoke cloak supplies which are the batteries uh, and the fluid which is inside of the machine and then you have the uh, hardware which are sorry the, the uh, paperwork which includes uh, a disc, uh, the zero wire uh, quick reference guide, the zero wire quick installation guide, a smoke cloak sticker to put on the outside of your house, and a template for mounting. The disc, uh, if a disc is not contained in the box, that's not a problem, because uh, I know that we're reducing the amount of discs we send out. Uh, for environmental reasons, you can actually, uh, there'll be a link included in your welcome package that you'll get in an email from us that will give you a link to all of the manuals and maintenance uh, documents required for any trouble that you have with uh, with your new Smoke Cloak Easy system. So the next step we're going to do is we're going to uh, start the process of installing. So uh, I want to remind you that uh, generally a Smoke Cloak is installed by a certified electrician because the devices all come uh, in 220. Our smallest system, the 600, does come in a 110 version but you will uh, still in most cases require an electrician to put a power cable on it and hardwire it to your, um, to your electrical panel. If you've ordered it in with a power cable on, then, uh, then that won't be a requirement. So assuming that uh, I'm talking to an electrician at this point, uh, I'm, we're talking about what's involved with uh, the installation of the smoke cloak as far as getting it on the wall. Uh, all that's really required at this point uh, to install a smoke cloak for tools is a Phillips screwdriver, and, uh, and then a low uh, a, a micro screwdriver for connecting your high voltage power. Uh, for, the, for our case in point, we're going to use, uh, today we're going to use a nut driver uh, on a drill and we're going to remove the five screws that hold the uh, cover on to the smoke cloak system. There are five screws on a smoke cloak. 
to remove the cover. So once you've removed all the screws, the cover comes right off and then you're going to place it out of the way so that it doesn't get damaged. You don't need it for the next little while. So to review what's inside when you open your smoke cloak, when we talk about smoke cloak, this is the heater core. This is where all uh, the energy is stored that operates and, and, uh, and works with the smoke. This is the uh, key, the motherboard that controls the entire system. This is the battery pad battery case. I'll turn it sideways so you can see. This is where the batteries are housed. This is where the fluid is housed. This is where you'll find your fluid when you unpack it. It's normally just sitting in here in a bag. So that's where your fluid will be. And your fluid sensor is already connected. Uh, so what we're gonna do now is review on how to install the batteries. When you receive it, it will be disconnected at the front. You don't want to connect the batteries until you have the system powered up and on the wall and ready to heat up because uh, if you put the batteries on without any power of the machine, it puts the batteries under some pretty heavy load and it's not good for the system. So on the front of the battery compartment, uh, you're going to see a face plate. It's on the front of the machine and you're going to remove the screw that holds the face plate in place uh, and it has a slot. You're going to drop it down and then when we get to the battery part we're going to take the batteries and we're going to place positive with negative at either end your contacts will be the closest together you're going to rotate them sideways and you're going to insert them into the battery compartment you're going to take the battery door and re put it back in place Once again, try not to strip your screw. Now we're going to connect the power to the battery. You're going to take the positive red, connect it to the positive red on the battery on the right side. You're going to take the negative ground and connect it on the negative side, on the right hand side. And then you're going to take the jumper that was included in the bag and you're going to jump the negative to the positive. Now your battery backup and smoke cloak is installed. <clears throat> so that's how we install the batteries. So included with the machine is a template in the paperwork as I reviewed. So this template is what's used to drill the holes it says top. You would place this on the wall of the location you'd like to place your smoke cloak if you're going to hang it on a wall rather than put it on a shelf or a cabinet. The system itself weighs between 30 pounds and 60 pounds. So you're going to want to have a good solid anchor into your drywall. You're going to mount this on the wall where you want it to be. You're going to drill your holes in your template. Then you're going to put your four anchors into the wall. And then you're going to hang the machine in the keyholes with the anchors. Once you have it on the wall, the front of the machine, you'll be able to drill and tighten them in. Make sure they're good and tight and they've dropped in deep into the anchor. The left side's a little problematic, so you're going to want to use a screwdriver rather than a nut driver just to get at it. Uh, you may have trouble with the one at the bottom left corner uh, if you don't have a long enough driver, but definitely you'll be able to tighten three of those points completely. The other one might be a little bit difficult to get thick, uh, snugged up. So I just want to point out where the electrical goes through for the electricians. When you're mounting it on the wall, it's going to come through the top of the machine, and then it's going to go down and through the bottom grommet. The top grommet will have the low voltage cabling for the keypad. And then it's going to come through the grommet at the bottom and it's going to come and connect this plug which would be contained in your kit is where you're going to connect your voltage your high voltage and then once you've got your neutral your 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 earth and your live on 
then you can plug it in. Certain jurisdictions may require that you earth uh, the machine directly. There is a fitting inside of the machine which allows you to connect it directly to the machine itself rather than running the earth through the motherboard. It all depends on local electrical ordinance. So the next stage is the fluid when it's on the wall. So you're going to remove the fluid from the bag, remove the cover for the fluid and you're going to take the fluid sensor and you're going to insert it. A little tricky here, you just want to make sure, as you can see there's a bung, you want to make sure the bung fits into the bottle and then you're going to bring the cap down over top and you're going to screw it on. So what you have here is a the pickup tube which takes the fluid into through the pumping system. You have the uh, low voltage which uh, monitors the sensor and then you have um, the uh, two-way or the one-way air nozzle which allows air into the bottle uh, so that you're not creating a vacuum when the system's actually activating. Once you have everything in place you're going to uh, put the fluid in. Label out generally uh, is the best way to go. You want to make sure at this point very careful not to kink uh, the wire or the fluid. If you turn it to the right or the left and play with it you should be able to get it in. And then double check that it's not kinked anywhere make sure that your wires are clear and now you've installed the fluid and the batteries into your smoke cloak system. Uh, at this point the system uh, could you could put the cover on if required if you had your power on but we suggest you leave it off because you're going to want to watch your interface. Uh, this uh, f uh, f as a note this uh, red block here uh, is for setting your time and retrigger function uh, as we'll discuss in the manual uh, and that can, is generally pre-programmed for the site that the uh, smoke cloak is attended to, so you generally don't have to change it, but if, it, if you do want to change it, uh, that's the, where the dip switch is for setting. Uh, the low voltage, you don't even need to touch here. It's already all done with our wiring harness, which is for our zero wire panel. So the next step of this process is to show you how to uh, connect <coughs> uh, the keypad uh, to the smoke cloak. The first thing you want to do is you want to put the power in the battery backup power. So you're going to remove the small screw uh, on the back of the panel and take off the cover. Then you're going to install the battery. So the battery connector only goes in one way and you need to be careful and observe polarity. It really only will go in one way. If you look, you can see there's holes in the end of the battery connector, just like putting in a, a, a small battery into, the, into, a, uh, into a telephone. You're going to connect it in and then you're going to put the battery in and put it back together. <clears throat> so that is the battery backup system to run <clears throat> just the keypad. <clears throat> so now you have a fully functioning backed up system. When the power goes out you have about an hour of function time. So now we want to connect the, the keypad to the smoke cloak and to its power source. So we're going to take our adapter, we're going to plug it into the wall, and it's going to attach into the back of the keypad. You'll hear a quick click as power gets to the, and you'll see the lights come on. In the next stage, you're going to take the connector for running from the smoke cloak and you're going to plug it into the back of the keypad beside where you plug the power in. Just make sure it's straight and insert it back in and now the keypad is connected to the smoke cloak. Uh, now that we've connected our keypad, our smoke cloak is mounted on the wall and our fluid and our batteries are connected and uh, everything is powered up starting to get ready we're going to go on to uh, how to work with your devices. So your devices that come with standard in the kit are a key fob, a door window contact, and a motion sensor. So the, we'll start with the key fob. Uh, the, the key fob, once you uh, get it out of the great packaging we have, looks a lot like your car starter. It's a good solid key fob. Uh, this is used to arm and disarm the system. It can also be used for panic. To arm it, you would hit the lock just like in your car and then disarm the unlock. And if you go to panic, you want to push 
the uh, arm and the disarm sim simultaneously, and that will trigger the smoke cloak. That will trigger the alarm system. So you turn it off, you just push the unlock button, and that will turn it off. So to, once again, you hit the arm button to arm the system, and then the disarm uh, button to uh, disarm it, and then you hit the two of them simultaneously for panic. Uh, the system will not arm uh, unless uh, everything is lined up, uh, because this system currently isn't powered up. Uh, we'll go that into that in a, uh, in a more detailed video on how to, uh, how to, to, to power up and test your system. So that is the key fob. So the next uh, device you're going to have is the, uh, is the door and window contact. Generally a kid has one of these, uh, but you can have as many married to the system. Uh, the battery will already be in it and it will already be learned to the device. So you're going to see a device that comes with, uh, <clears throat> it comes with the device that goes on to your uh, window and the device that goes on to your wall. It's a magnetic switch. So the uh, operation is quite simple. When the door is open and the magnet is removed, that's going to send a signal to your keypad that somebody's opened the door or trying to break in through the door, and in turn it's going to trigger. It's that simple. It's a magnetic switch. So you want to make sure that the magnet is five, no more than five eighths of an inch away uh, from uh, uh, from, the, from each other, the magnet and the, dev the device itself, uh, so that it's going to operate correctly. It comes with uh, tape, which allows you uh, 3M tape which allows you to uh, tape it on. You want to make sure you, you uh, read the, the paperwork that comes with it, which talks about temperatures, but you don't want to install this in temperatures below 50 uh, degrees Fahrenheit, uh, and you want to wait 24 hours for it to adhere before uh, it's fully uh, adhered. It's 3M tape, which comes included. You can also, uh, if required, um, use screws to mount it, but generally this is light enough that your 3M tape will be more than adequate. It also comes with a black cover, so you can change it if it's a black frame to have a black cover uh, and uh, on both of them, which really is, is quite nice. So, to, uh, to open your case, in case you want to change covers, I will quickly review. You're just going to turn it over and you're going to slide it back. It's going to click and then you just take your screwdriver and you put it in here and then this will come off. And inside of this you will find your, your battery. Uh, and your electronics. If you want now, you could use the black case. The same thing can happen with your door contact. So the battery, when it's installed, is positive up. Uh, when you put it on, uh, it's just the reverse. You just you want to make sure that you place the cover on top of the battery pack uh, system. Right, that way you get it done, and then you just click it back into place and it's locked. So that's how the door contact works. So uh, we'll walk over to the window here and show you what it should look like. So this is a uh, window uh, contact on a window uh, to show you how it works. So uh, in this case, uh, just because of the size, we have the magnet on the door frame, and we have the uh, uh, sorry on the window frame, and we have the actual device on the window itself. In most cases, you would want to do it the other way, but in windows, it's really a matter of space because you want the device. Uh, in this case, will actually when we move the window the device will move, which causes vibration and in turn will actually reduce the life expectancy. So we always tell people put the magnet on the, on the part that's moving versus uh, on uh, the, the stationary uh, part, put the magnet on that and then put the device itself on the stationary part. But that way you're not moving. But as you can see, you want about a five, uh, five eighths maximum and that's your, your contact. So what happens now when somebody opens the door or the window, you're removing the device away from the magnet, a reed is going to click and it's going to send a signal and your smoke cloak is going to trigger. And that's how a door contact operates. Uh, we're going to look at the, the device, final device that's included with this kit, which is a motion sensor or also referred to as a passive infrared detector. This device, as all devices, is already married and already has a battery installed. But I will review it quickly for you. So when you get it out of the case, it actually isn't going to do anything uh, because it's, a, it's the, of the technology, uh, you, you want to open it up and as you open it up, you're going to see in the back is your battery and you're going to, as you open it, that will actually bring it back to life. Um, it, so you've got your reed switch and your battery in the back uh, and there's your cover. So when you're actually mounting this, you will see that on the back of it, you have your punch outs where you can place your screws. So generally when you mount, if you look at it, it's on an angle. 
When you're mounting a motion detector, if you mount it on the bottom too, it actually points it downwards. It's very important when mounting a, a motion sensor that it's uh, mounted in such a way that it's covering the area of movement because it's detecting uh, heat signature and that's what actually triggers a motion sensor. Passive infrared is what it's called. So you want it. So we'll walk over to the wall here and we'll show you what a motion sensor look like, looks like mounted on a wall. So this motion sensor here that we're showing you is mounted in the corner. It's picking up the majority of the room that it's in, in this family room of this residence. Uh, and it's aimed on a downward angle because it gets a, a much better uh, shot from a higher angle. In some cases, uh, you may need to lower them slightly. And if that's the case, then you'll actually mount it on the flat of the back so that it's, it's aiming straight out. But try to get the motion tech detector up a little higher on the wall. We do have videos that we can send you if you need more information on how to mount passive infrared detectors. There's also a good instruction manual uh, included inside of the box that talks to you about properly installing them. It's very important that you install them correctly so that they work because really they're just looking for motion. When, you're, when your alarm is set and, uh, and you're not there, that sensor is waiting for somebody to be in the building. So if they actually come through a window that doesn't have uh, a motion sensor or they or a door contact or they come uh, through the roof of your premise and drop into it, this is where the motion becomes very handy because it will trigger uh, movement with inside. Also if you program it for the stay function and you want your smoke cloak to protect you at night but you want to be able to move freely then the, the, the motion sensor will be uh, actually put on hold for a stay mode so you can move freely within the residence as long as you don't open and close any perimeter doors the smoke cloak and the uh, ultrasound hub won't trigger. So uh, once you've connected your keypad and powered everything up, you're going to see a bunch of flashy lights going. So the first one you're going to notice is that LD3 on your smoke cloak system is going to be solid red. Once the machine is up to proper operating temperature, which takes about nine minutes, it will go uh, to uh, flashing red. That indicates that everything's running well. So you want to see it either flashing red or off. As long as it's doing that, it's operating. So <clears throat> the other thing you want to pay attention to is your what your keypad is showing. So when we look at the keypad, you have your number pad, but the main one you want to watch is the ready light. <clears throat> the ready light is an indication that everything is, is working properly and all of the information coming out of the smoke cloak is correct. When you first plug it in, the keypad, you to find out how what's actually going on, you would push the information key, the I key. And it's going to tell you what's actually going on right now with the smoke cloak. We'll demonstrate that in a moment. But to start with, you're going to have to set the date and time on your keypad. Um, you may have to set it. So the best way to set your keypad date and time is to push menu and uh, eight. And then it'll ask you for your four digit passcode, which we'll have given you. You enter your four digit passcode and then it'll uh, ask you to press one to enter the time and date and follow it through. It's a GUI interface. It's fairly easy to work with uh, and, uh, and you should be, have no problem setting your time and date. So the ne for, next thing we have to do is we have to actually get all of the lights proper. Right now, when you first plug it in, you're not going to have the right number of lights. What we want to see on a smoke cloak on the interface board is six green lights, one flashing red. So right now, I only have four. Well, the reason is I haven't connected the batteries. They're in place, but I need to connect them. So you can connect them either at the top or you can connect them down at the battery, uh, at the batteries. Because you don't want to connect the batteries, as I mentioned in the other video, until you've actually got power to the machine. So once you connect the batteries, LD1 will come on and it'll indicate your batteries are okay. LD2 is indicating that your main power is okay. Then you've got your flashing red light, which indicates that the machine is up to temperature. So now we, now we need to go through the system ready, system OK, and fluid. So once you have the fluid, we've got the fluid outside of the machine right now just to have a clear view. But once the fluid sensor is installed, you want to make sure this low voltage cable is plugged into the machine. Now, in, beside the positive and negative of where you plug in the batteries is where the cable goes in. So you carefully want to plug that cable in. Now, to reset the counter for fluid, it's you need to disconnect this cable. We'll cover that again in a service video. But this cable generally will be plugged in when you get the machine. We recommend you disconnect it and reconnect it once it's powered up, and that resets everything in the machine. But what you're looking for over here is six green lights, which we now have. 
That indicates that the smoke cloak is ready to work. It's now connected, it's now, it, it's functioning on its own, independently, properly. So now we'll go to the keypad. And we go back to the keypad, what we want to see is this ready light needs to be green. Now, there can be multiple reasons why that ready light goes on and off. And in this case, it's the fluid, uh, the fluid sensor is low uh, because the fluid bottles are low. But right now, we've got all green lights. We're good to go. So we're going to push the eye to show you. So now that you've put your door contacts and everything in the correct spot, <clears throat> the, um, they need to be closed. So your motion sensor needs to be in place and your doors need to be closed for you to arm the system. Because right now we can't arm it. So I'm going to open this door. I'm going to simulate opening a door. This is our door contact. And I'm going to simulate opening the door. And as you can see, the green light has gone off. That, that green light, you can't arm the smoke cloak unless that green light is, is on. You can't arm it to protect you whether it's away or in stay mode. So make sure all the doors and the windows are closed, you've got your green light, and then you're ready, you know you can, you can arm the system. Arming the system is very simple. You use your key fob, and you push the lock function, just like you would put, push a lock function, function on your, um, your car alarm to lock your car. What you're gonna hear is the keypad counting down the 10 seconds to arm. Now I want to point out the smoke cloak is set up with uh, to be armed once you've left the premise. So that's why we have the loud chirp. We program it out of the box so that when you're leaving, you would walk outside of your apartment and you would shut your door, lock it, and then just before you walk away, you're going to push the arm button and you're going to hear, hear that chirp. Now you know you've armed the smoke cloak. This counter will continue to count, will count down for uh, one minute and then it will set the system. To disarm the system, once uh, you come back, you would just si simply push the unlock button and that will disarm the system. The last function that uh, I want to point out is your panic system. So Smoke Cloak, regardless of whether or not the green ready light is on, has a panic function. So in the event of a home invasion or some reason you want to trigger your Smoke Cloak while you're there, you can actually push the lock and the unlock button simultaneously. If you put your thumb over it, you could do it that way, or two fingers. We do it that way so that it can't inadvertently set it off while it's in your pocket. You need to simultaneously push the lock and the unlock, and that will trigger uh, an automatic, uh, an automatic uh, activation of the smoke cloak. I will demonstrate that one uh, at a later date, if you wish, when I disconnect it from the smoke cloak, because at this point uh, I've triggered or I'll do it in another video. So that basically covers what you want it to look like when you're installing, uh, once you've installed it. Your smoke cloak is pretty much ready to go. You button it up, put your cover on it, and walk away. Uh, we'll also do a video on how to set up the application on your phone. So now we're going to actually demonstrate the system activating so that you can uh, understand the function and also how to test your system. So at this, for this uh, purpose of this video, we're going to use a door window contact. So we're going to assume that your door window contact is connected and we have our key fob. So to, now that I have my green light on my keypad and all my lights are green on my machine and my one flashing red light, which indicates the heater core pulse charging, we know everything's ready. I'm going to push the lock uh, button, just like you would push a lock button on your car remote, and the system's going to chirp loud. It's going to do that because you're going to arm it when you're outside of your premise, and that way you can hear it through the walls and know that it's armed. For the next 30 seconds to a minute, the machine is going to count down an arm cycle. The system is still considered live at this point, so if for any reason you were to open the door uh, or move around within the premise, the system would still activate. This countdown there is uh, more for the monitoring for, our, for the application to monitor that it's fully armed. So that final chirp indicates that the system is fully armed and uh, you can now leave your premise and go on your merry way and your smoke cloak is protecting. So we're now going to simulate someone opening the door or breaking into the premise and triggering a door or window contact. So in front of you on the, uh, on the table here, I have a door contact set up. The magnet is beside the reed. Something as simple as opening the door is going to trigger the smoke cloak. I'm going to simulate that now by removing the magnet away. Now I'm going to 
to turn it off by using the disarm button because I'm blowing the smoke out of the door right now just for the sake of getting it out of here. When you test it uh, in place, you're going to want to remember you're going to need to vent the smoke out. Another thing you want to keep in mind is you do want to uh, run this through uh, twice because the first time the system has to prime. So it won't be fully functioning until the second time. So now we're going to demonstrate the panic very quickly. So to set off the panic, we are going to push the lock and the unlock simultaneously and that is going to trigger the system in duress whether it's set or not regardless of whether or not the green light ready is on. To turn it off, once again we just hit the disconnect and that will shut it off. That concludes how to uh, work your system and uh, uh, our next video will show how to work with the application. Thank you.